Barney's Thanksgiving. Early on Thanksgiving morning, the house was filled with yummy smells. We'll have lots of good things to eat when our company comes, said Barney. I can't wait for my favorite dessert, said BJ. Aye, pumpkin pie. BJ and Baby Bob helped Barney set the table. Barney, what is Thanksgiving? asked Baby Bob. It's the day we say thank you for things like friends and family, said Barney. And one way to say thank you is by sharing our nice meal. Baby Bob looked at, hungry, at a hungry bird on the windowsill. I wish we could share Thanksgiving with our animal friends, she said. That's a great idea, sissy, said BJ. It sure is, Barney agreed. We'll make a special Thanksgiving meal for them. I'm thankful to the birds for their pretty songs, said Bernie. So I'll give them some tasty seeds. I like the squirrel's funny tricks, laughed BJ. I'll say thank you with some crunchy peanuts. Baby Bob poured some milk for the kittens. This is to say thank you for purring, she giggled. I play with the dogs every day, said BJ, so I'm saying thank you with dog biscuits. Thank you bunnies for showing us how to hop, 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 said Baby Bob. They'll love carrots for Thanksgiving, laughed BJ. I'm thankful for the deer and their quiet beauty, said Barney. I'll give them some nice hay to eat. I've got some fresh lettuce for this turtle, said BJ, to say thanks for reminding me to slow down sometimes. And the fuzzy caterpillars remind me to dress warmly, said Baby Bob. I'm saying thank you with some nice flower petals. Barney, BJ and Baby Bob put all of the good things to eat on the picnic table. I think this looks like a super de duper Thanksgiving, said Barney. Now let's go inside for our Thanksgiving meal. Ding dong, ding dong. The doorbell rang again and again. And every time the door opened, more friends had come to visit. This is my favorite part of Thanksgiving, said Barney. Watching the animals eat makes me hungry, laughed Baby Bob. Me too, said BJ. Inside the kitchen, the oven timer went tick, 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 ding. Barney carefully took something very special out of the oven. Ay, 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 my pumpkin pie, said BJ. It's time to eat, said Barney. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And everyone did. Winnie the Pooh's Thanksgiving. But where can he be? Rabbit said in his most frustrated, I really want to know voice. It was the question that was in the mind of everyone, standing at Winnie the Pooh's front door. The thoroughly frazzled rabbit once again tapped loudly on the door, which continued to stand unopened no matter how vigorously he applied his knuckles. Tigger was sitting back on his tail with his face flattened against the glass of Pooh's window. There's nothing moving in there, he informed the others. That doesn't mean a great deal rumbled Eeyore from where he was seated on a nearby patch of grass. Not moving is one of the things Pooh Bear does best, next to snoring. And eating honey, added little Roo excitedly. Isn't that right, Mom? Yes, dear, Kanga said, as she smiled down at him and gently straightened his hair with her hand. Why would Pooh ask us here? 
if he were somewhere else, whistled Gopher, scratching his head. Piglet stood wringing his very small hands worriedly. Oh dear, he sighed, I do hope he's all right. Now, let's not jump to conclusions, Ganga spoke up gently, and Tigger wondered why ever not, because jumping was something he thoroughly enjoyed. But, he supposed, conclusions must be a little like rabbit. They're not particularly pleased when people jump at them. If I remember correctly, Kanga continued, Pooh Bear simply asked us to meet him. He didn't mention where. Very nice of him too, remarked Eeyore. He obviously didn't want us to feel bad if we couldn't find the right place, so he kept the location a secret. But we're making progress, hooted Tigger. We know for sure it isn't exactly here. And he pointed to the door. Now, Rabbit sighed. If we could only think of the place where Pooh is. Perhaps you just did, rumbled Eeyore. Pooh was certainly thinking about something when he called us together. And Pooh Boy always does his best head work, continued Tigger. In his very own thoughtful spot, finished Piglet. And that is exactly where they found Winnie the Pooh, high atop the grassy knoll. With its spectacular view of the Hundred Acre Wood and the beautiful blue sky hanging high above it, where Pooh loved to sit and think. It was the sitting in such a special place that was important. After all, not the thinking. Therefore, it was no surprise at all when Pooh was found up there doing precisely that, sitting and looking thoughtful. And there was no doubt as to what Pooh was being thoughtful about. It was all spread out on a blanket before him. Pooh's pantry must have been completely emptied, because everything sweet and tasty had been toted from his house to the grassy knoll and arranged to look its most delicious. I'm so very glad you've come, said Winnie the Pooh happily. I don't think this food could have waited much longer. And neither could I, he added with a smile. Then let's not waste a moment more, announced Rabbit, and they all sat down to eat. I'm very glad to see you at last, said Pooh. I hope I haven't brought too much to eat. No such thing as too many eats when eating is the name of the game, chuckled Tigger, as he happily rubbed his paws together. Is eating the only reason you caught us together, Pooh Bear? asked Owl. Called you together where? responded Pooh. Tucking his tongue carefully into the corner of his mouth, as he pulled the stopper on a fresh cork of honey, because, as everyone knows, a stopper cannot be properly pulled if a tongue is not tactfully tucked. Why? Why call this here, Pooh? Speaked Roo. Did I do that? Said Pooh, so surprised by the idea that he waited an extra second or two before pouring an extra large dollop of honey into his mouth. You certainly did, answered Gopher. And what we want to know is why you did it. Not that it wasn't an excellent idea, Pooh dear, Kanga added gently. Well, murmured Pooh in a thoughtful sort of voice as he gently tucked on an ear with his honey smeared. Paw. It must have begun this morning when I sat down for breakfast. Pooh explained how he was suddenly very much aware of how special a breakfast could be 
because like so very many things, sunsets and birthdays, surprises and nap time, hugs and extra dessert, a breakfast was more than just today. It wasn't always there when a bear needed it sort of thing. You mean you were grateful, Pooh? asked Piglet in a very quiet voice when his friend had finished. Why yes, Piglet, smiled Pooh. That's it exactly. And it was such a wonderful thank you very much feeling and so very, very large that I knew it was something I had to share with those I'm most grateful for. And what sort of those do you mean, Pooh? wondered Owl. Why, you all, of course, exclaimed Pooh, my very best and dearest friends. <laughs> well, sniffed Rabbit, I am certainly grateful that you thought of it. And what are you grateful for, Piglet? Pooh inquired politely as he put his arm around his friend's very small shoulders. Well, began Piglet nervously, and then continued in a rush. For a very small animal, I have a great deal to be thankful for, and having a lot to be grateful for, is when you come right down to it, a lot to be grateful for. Piglet finished quite out of breath. When the question of gratitude was put to Rabbit, he explained that what he was primarily thankful for, besides his many very good friends of course, was that a seed had the extremely good sense to sprout when he planted it in his garden. I'm grateful that the ground looks as good from underneath as it does from on top, whispered Gopher. Yes, sir! Tigger expressed his gratitude that downing through the air was just as splendorous as upping. The item for which I am indeed most thankful, announced Owl in his most dignified voice, is that I always remember in the nick of time to land on my feet and not on my face. I am grateful just for the chance to be grateful, rumbled Eeyore. If that's alright with everyone, that is. Everyone agreed that it was, indeed, quite all right with them. Kanga and Little Roo said they were grateful for each other at exactly the same time. And at that very moment, Christopher Robin arrived, quite out of breath, and said, I'm terribly sorry to be so late, Pooh Bear. What exactly are we all doing up here? We're having a feast and telling each other what we are grateful for, said Pooh. Then Pooh surveyed the blanket and realized that there wasn't a single smackerel of anything left to eat. You missed the feast part, I'm afraid, he told Christopher Robin sadly. That's all right, laughed Christopher Robin. I can still do the other. Then he stood up straight and began to speak in a very grown-up voice. I'm very grateful for having the opportunity of finding you all here together, so I can invite you to join me for Thanksgiving dinner. Thanksgiving dinner? exclaimed everyone all at once. What's that? Well, you already know the most important part, laughed Christopher Robin. It's a special time when all the things we're grateful for throughout the year have their very own day to celebrate with us. What a nice idea, said Pooh with a satisfied smile. I'd like to thank whoever thought of it. You thought of it all by your lonesome buddy bear, shouted Tigger as he slapped Pooh happily on the back. Ha, huh, said Pooh with a grin. The dinner part did sound familiar. And you did mention dinner? Pooh asked carefully. 
All you can eat and more, Christopher Robin assured him. Isn't it wonderful, said Pooh, as he rubbed his tummy, that Thanksgiving dinner is something we're all warmed up for. Everyone agreed that it was, indeed, quite wonderful. Another thing, said Pooh quietly, to be so very grateful for. Spot's Thanksgiving Dad, I'm making a pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving. You can have my best pumpkin. You're a good pie maker, Spot. Yummy! Mom! Dad! Grandpa and Grandma are here! I've made a pumpkin pie. We love pumpkin pie! This is for you, Spot. I hope it fits. Here comes the best pumpkin pie ever made. Great hat! What a lovely dinner! Happy Thanksgiving, everyone! Thanksgiving! It was the Saturday before Thanksgiving. There was lots to do, because Grandma and Grandpa were coming over for Thanksgiving. Andrew, Abigail and Elizabeth were excited when the family sat down for breakfast. Holidays are a lot more fun when we all help prepare for them, said Mother. There are things we need to think about and things we need to do. Right, said Dad. So let's make plans now. Well, I filled this fat china turkey with notes for the Take Your Turn game said mom. I thought each of you could draw three notes from it. And, said dad, you have between now and Thursday to do the free th these three things. Sounds like fun, said Andrew. Can I go first? Sure, everyone said. Andrew reached into the jar. Make Thanksgiving placemats, he read. Not too bad. Next he drew, vacuum the house. Still not too bad, he said. Andrew's third note said, read the story of Thanksgiving and tell it to someone. Yes, he shouted, no dusting. Elizabeth drew, play, pin the tail feathers on the turkey with two other people. Next she read, make apple turkeys. Her last job was dust the house. Ha, <laughs> said Andrew. Ha, yourself, said Elizabeth. I like dusting. Take your turn, Abigail, said Mom. Abigail drew, paint your face with Indian symbols. Grind cranberries was next. Then Abigail drew, on Thanksgiving Day, Put five kernels of corn beside each plate. What's the corn for? she asked. Well, said Mom, one year the pilgrims' crops didn't get enough rain. The pilgrims didn't have much food to eat, maybe just a few grains of corn a day. Then rain came and their crops were saved. But why am I supposed to put corn by our plates? asked Abigail. Many people use five kernels of corn to remember that the pilgrims didn't have very much, Mom answered. It also helps people remember how much we have today. So right before Thanksgiving dinner, we will each name five things for which we are thankful, said Mom. All right, said Elizabeth and Andrew together. Hmm, said Abigail. During the next few days, Abigail thought about what she would say when she picked up her corn. I'm thankful for special things. She thought, things such as books, games, toys. But there must be other things, 
more special things for which I should be thankful. On Thanksgiving morning, Abigail painted her face like an Indian's. She put the five kernels of corn beside each plate. Again she wondered what she would say at mealtime. Maybe she would tell how thankful she was for food, or her house or her room. Still she wanted to think of something more special. She found Elizabeth making turkeys out of apples and raisins. What are you going to be thankful for? Abigail asked her. Raisins for one thing, said Elizabeth, popping one in her mouth. Want one? Okay, said Abigail. Now let's go ask Andrew what he's going to be thankful for. But Andrew was reading the story of First Thanksgiving. Did you know the pilgrims came to America on a ship called the Mayflower, he asked, and the Indians, who lived here first, helped them get settled? Andrew showed them some pictures. The pilgrims invited the Indians to a feast to help celebrate their first harvest. That was the first Thanksgiving. Time for cranberries, called Mom. I need my best grinder. Abigail ran to the kitchen. The cranberries popped as she cranked the grinder. Hello, shouted a voice. Abigail jumped. Grandpa and Grandma had arrived. Mmm, pie, said Andrew, helping Grandma set them down. Pumpkin, just as you all love, said Grandma. And a Thanksgiving Day hug, one for each of you, said Grandpa. Soon it was time for dinner. Everyone gathered around the table. Suddenly Abigail remembered the corn by her plate. She still wasn't sure what five things she was going to say. Grandpa picked his five kernels. I'm thankful for peace, for freedom, for health, for the beautiful day, and for all this food, he said. Abigail stared at her corn. She hardly heard the other speak. What should she say? Abigail, said Mom softly, what are you thankful for? It was her turn. Abigail looked up at Mom and Dad and at Grandma. They were smiling at her. She looked at Grandpa and Andrew and Elizabeth. They smiled too. And at last Abigail knew what she was going to say. One by one, she picked up her pieces of corn. Number one, she said, I'm thankful for my parents. Number two, I'm thankful for my grandparents. Number three, I'm thankful for you, Andrew. Number four, I'm thankful for you, Elizabeth. And number five, or last of all, I'm thankful for this home where all of us love one another. Yes, I'm very thankful on this Thanksgiving day. Beautiful, said Mom. And now, please pass the turkey. The Thanksgiving Monster On Thanksgiving Day, a monster crept into Kermit's house and stole Thanksgiving dinner. Soon the guests began to arrive. Thanksgiving ruined, <laughs> said the monster. But Thanksgiving wasn't ruined. Instead, Kermit said, I am thankful that each one of you came to my party. Then Miss Piggy stood up and said, Then Andy and Randy tried to stand up, but their chairs got tangled. Then the Elvises stood up and said, Suddenly, the monster fell to the ground. Crash! Everybody rushed to the window. Thanksgiving, not so bad after all, said the monster.